Hello everyone, it's Left Plane here. Back with part three of our mini-series on the DASH airplane systems. Today we're going to build a braking system for this beautiful car that I built. Now, it's a very basic car, of course. It's, I used metal, so it's going to be a little bit heavy. And it's powered by these two smart thrusters. It's not very fast, but it's enough to gain some speed and to have a look at the effects of our braking system. Now the braking system is going to be the same one that uh, I built into the Dash 8. So it's going to involve a parking brake that is that you can turn on with a switch and it's going to involve a, a dynamic brake for you know when you are taxing and you want to brake the uh, you want to reduce the speed a little bit but not to a complete stop so a, a soft kind of brake we have the parking brake that's going to completely block the wheels and we're going to have the dynamic uh, brake that's going to just slow the wheels down apply force to the wheels so they uh, um, so they have a resistance and just slow slow the whole machine in this case the car or in other case the plane slow the whole machine down the way we're going to do is uh, do this is uh, we're going to use a smart engine and um, this smart engine will have a target rotation of zero. Meaning, um, if, we, if we connect this to the wheels and give it a rotation of zero, uh, at no power, the wheels are just going to rotate freely. But if, as soon as we apply a, a power to the, to the engine, um, it will try to to yeah to give the the wheels target rotation which is zero it will try to break down the wheels until they are the complete standstill right so let's connect what we have for now this is the power input no sorry this is the the rotation speed input so it's going to be white and we can already connect this up the wheels. The direction doesn't really matter because we are we're not not moving the wheels but just breaking the wheels. Um, right. And now for the power input. The power input is gonna be this oh, it's in this direction. Right. This math block is gonna be our power input. That's why we're gonna paint it black and connect it up to the engine. First we're going to start with the with the parking brake system because it's it's only one block and a memory bit and a and a switch so that's going to be very fast. We need a multiplier block. We need a a memory block and we need a switch for that. Right. Now, in order to, to completely block the wheels, the number isn't, isn't even that important, the, the number that we give this, this memory block. That's going to determine the, the power of the engine. Um, I'm using 10,000, I guess 1,000 or even 500 is enough. I don't know. You can experiment with it. Uh, the, mo the most important thing for the parking brake is that it completely blocks the wheels. So. Yeah, let's just let's just give it a power of ten thousand, so we're sure that that the engine has enough power. Let's connect this up to the memory and transfer the value. Right now, we can connect the memory to the multiplier block, connect the switch to the multiplier block, and connect everything to the uh, to the add block. Right, so now, in theory, we can connect this up to, to the seat. Now, in theory, we should have a working parking brake. So if we turn this on and turn on the engines, these wheels are not going to move. 
the front wheels are very slowly because the power of the engine is enough to to slowly move our car although the the wheels are completely blocked it's just sliding um, sliding along the ground but uh, the wheels are not rotating and this is this was our goal and now if we release the parking brake the power of the engine becomes zero so the wheels can rotate freely parking brake off parking brake on nice now for our dynamic wheel brake for that we will need a, a counter block I'm just gonna put this here and then we're gonna build us another limited counter so if you watched the last video um, that I did uh, for the no, this is was it was the second to last video that I did or the engine systems um, where we used the counter to determine the the power of the engines um, we need a limited counter for that that has an upper and a lower value so very easily we need two math blocks we need two math blocks and we say set them to less than and greater than of course we need a, a value to compare them with and we need two multiplier blocks so for these gates we're going to compare the counter value that's why we have to paint it white with the memory values right and we have to give this multiplier value also a memory block and you can see why in a minute now let's connect this up we need to check the counter value against these two values then back to the multiplier back to the counter back to the multiplier back to the counter and we're going to multiply this value with another value right and this goes to the addition block and back to the to the engine righty so if this is the less than check so the counter always has to be less than a certain value to be increased right this value is going to be our our breaking our breaking force so let's let's start with 50 you can you can experiment with it it depends on on the weight of your craft on on the number of factors um for this car i found out 50 is is plenty let's do it right so this gate now checks if the counter is ah, okay I see yeah um, let's do this let's connect the button so this gate won't activate right this is going to be our brake button and now as long as the counter has a value of less than 50 we can increase and as soon as it, as it reaches 50 we can no, no longer increase the value right so the upper limit is set uh, the lower limit is going to be zero and yeah to be precise it should be a value of two because there's a two tick delay within the system um, for the shut off so yeah we, normally we sh should give it a value of two but uh, it doesn't matter if the counter um, goes down to zero or goes down to minus two won't really matter we have the parking brake with a value of 10,000 um, 
so that won't make a difference. Uh, negative values don't count to the to the engine anyway. So yeah, we're just gonna leave it at zero. Um, right. This is gonna be the value that that brings the counter back back down to zero. So if we apply a braking force, um, the counter will increase until we reach 50, until we reach the maximum braking force, and then we'll automatically uh, count down back to zero if we release the button. So to simulate a, you know, a gentle brake, you don't you don't step on the brake and have the instant the maximum braking force, but you slowly gently step on the brake, and that way. Um, you can also increase the braking force. You don't need the maximum braking force. If you are if you are holding the braking button and you feel the braking force is enough, you can release the braking button and push it again. So um, the counter doesn't necessarily have to reach its highest value of 50, but we can, um, you know, we can fluctuate around 30, for example. If we need a lower braking force, we can fluctuate around 10. Um, yeah. It's it's just a n more natural a more natural braking, right? So in order for this to to count us back down, we need yeah now now I made a mistake. We don't need this. We don't need this button. Uh, we no, don't need this memory panel. We need it here. This counting down. This counting down uh, multiplier gate will be brown, so that way the counter knows if it's if this gate lights up. Um, we don't want to count up by one, but we don't. Uh, we want to count down. Uh, this this will have a, a value of minus one because of its color if it's lit up. So for any for any value greater than zero, if the counter is greater than zero. This gate will be active and try to count down uh, with a value of minus one. So in order to, to counter that, because now if we, if we try to increase the counter value, this will give us a, a value of plus one, but as soon as we are above zero, this will give us a value of minus one, adding up to a value of zero. So to prevent that, we have to give it another input from a memory panel and give this memory panel a value of 2. No, I did this wrong. First, we set the counter block to a value of 2. And then, that was the wrong panel. And then we saw this value in the memory panel. Cool. Um, depending on depending on your maximum braking force, if you have a very big craft and 50 is not enough, you might want to consider uh, giving this a higher number. You know, um, now the total, if this is minus one and this is two, of course the the collective the collective number is one. Um, it adds w it adds one per tick, so it adds thirty um, sorry forty per second. Uh, so it takes one point two five seconds now to reach the maximum of fifty. If you have two hundred and four five seconds is too long um, for you. You know, too too uh, too shallow of a braking force. You can increase that. Um, so we might give this not two, but four, or maybe eight as an input. But in this case, we would also need uh, the, the gate that's counting down. Uh, here, a number input. We don't need one because it's one anyway, or minus one because of the color. Uh, if we want to count up by eight, eight per tick. Uh, if this is eight, an input of eight, we don't really want to count down, uh, count up by eight. We want to count up by four. So we need eight input here and four input here. So eight 
and this will be minus 4 because of the brown color, the collective input will be plus 4. So this gate, if there is a gate, if we need another input, has always got to be half of this input. We only don't need this memory block here because we have a value of 2 and half of 2 is 1. And yeah, we don't need an input of 1 because it's 1 anyway. Right. But now this should work. This has a value of 2. We can disconnect this. And we can check this with our number blocks. Let's just give this a red color and connect this up. Right, so at the moment we are at minus 2, of course, because of the, of the delay within the system. But now if we count up, we'll go up to 50 and it will fluctuate because uh, once we have reached 50, this gate will turn off and this gate will still be active and try to reduce the number. But only as far, only to the point where, where this value is less than 50, then this gate will activate again and try to increase it again. So. We're counting up, up until 50, and if we release the button, it will count back down to zero, or minus two. Um, you know what, screw it, let's, let's be pedantic here. Let's give this a value of two, and give this another value of zero, but of two. So that way, the counter should count down to two. Why? Why is that? That is... That is disturbing to me now. I don't know what's happening. So, now we got minus two. Okay, I don't know what's happening, but, you know, screw it. Minus two is good enough. Right, so now we have the dynamic braking system. All we have to do is connect this up. It is already connected up. Nice. So this, um, this math block will now add these two values together. So if the parking brake is off, we can use the dynamic brake. If the parking brake is on, we can still use the dynamic brake, but it doesn't really matter if it's 10,000 or 10,050. The, um, the wheels will still you know, block. All right, let's test it out. So now the parking brake is set. If we release it, we'll start to roll. And now we can apply our dynamic wheel brake. And you see it, it builds up the force and very slowly then comes to a stop. It seems like 50 is enough to completely block the wheel. If you don't want that, just give it a smaller value. Give it a value of 30 and see what happens. But yeah, and as you see, if we tap, if we tap the brake, we can very nicely just control the speed. It's especially useful if you got a plane like the dash, for example, where the idle speed of the plane is enough to to already, you know, get it rolling. If the engines are running, the, the plane will already uh, start to taxi. And that way, you know, you can control your speed on the ground just by gently tapping the wheel brakes. Nice. Set the parking brake. of the engines right and there we have it braking system for your cars for your planes if you got any questions if you got any suggestions uh, any suggestions of what I should build next if you have uh, if you have ideas yeah just write it in the comments hit me up on discord hit me up on steam and apart from that 
Uh, like always, thanks for watching and bye-bye.